somebody hail the Most High this evening? Can somebody hail the King of Kings this evening? Glory to God in the highest. You are welcome to Reset 2024, Day 3. Glory! We want to welcome our parishioners online. We welcome you to 2024 Reset, Day 3. We want to use this opportunity to let you know that the Lord will reach you and reset you wherever the you are all over the world. As he is here, he is with you wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I will just do a small exercise before we pray. As I say reset 2024, you say increase. Reset 2024. Increase. Reset 2024. The Lord is resetting us early so that the increase we have yearned for, the increase we had cried for, the increase he has prepared us for in 2024, we'll walk into it early in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for open heavens over us this evening. We thank you for that which you have planned and prepared for us tonight. Day one was glorious. Day two was awesome. Today will be cataclysmic. We release our faith and receive that which are planned for us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That the increase you have planned for us in our economic realities, in our spiritual realities, in our emotional realities, we will see early in 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your name alone be glorified, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Reset 2024. TC. Now, come on, somebody. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. Now, I want you to give him a shout of praise. Now, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've got joy.
Almighty God. Why don't you raise up those holy hands to the Most High God and just worship Him tonight. The one who is the Almighty. Alagbara. Eleburuike. Erujeje. The Almighty God. The one who exalts glory all by himself. It is unto you we have gathered here tonight. We worship you tonight, our Father. The Lord God Almighty. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. House on the rock. Why don't you raise up those holy hands to the Most High God. To the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The I Am that I Am. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Rose of Sharon. The Lily of the Valley. The Bright and the Morning Star. Our Father, in you we put our trust. In you we put our hope. None can compare with you. None can be matched with you, our Father. Tonight, Father, we have gathered here tonight in exaltation of your holy name. It is you we raise, Father. Because without you, there is no us. Because of you, we are here tonight for the reset. And we know, Father, without any shadow of doubt, that our lives is being reset already. Testimonies are flowing in already. We are seeing your hand upon our lives already. Father, we thank you tonight. House on the Rock has gathered tonight. Father, in worship of your holy name, in honor of your holy name, you are our help from ages past our present help and our help for ages to come in you we cast our trust in you we put our hope we are joyful tonight is there anyone joyful tonight is there anyone happy tonight to be in the presence of god for tonight's third edition of reset conference why don't you jump on your feet why don't you clap those hands why don't you rejoice for our god he is good Hallelujah. Please have your seat and look to the media for presentation. Hallelujah. This sacrifice we are talking about, there are five kedas. The first keda or sacrifice is worship. Second sacrifice is obedience. The third keda of sacrifice is to give your resources. The fourth keda of sacrifice is death to flesh. And if I may add, it's about prayer. Welcome to Reset 2024, day three. My name is Samson Oklubia. Day one was extraordinary, day two was amazing, and day three, we're hoping for something even more. Before service yesterday, we met up with some parishioners just to ask them what their expectations are from service, and this is what they have to say. All right, Mercy, what are your expectations from service today? I'm sure you didn't just walk into service. Well, Reset 2024 is all about increase. My first day was mind-blowing, so I'm here for day two. I know it's definitely going to have a lot, a lot of blessings and grace that will follow. I am ready for the reset for the year 2024. So my expectations are to reset on so many aspects of my life. Family, business, work, career, and everything. Somebody defined the word goodness. It means working for the benefit of others and not thinking about yourself. One of the ways you can provoke the goodness of God is by singing and praising God. There were three nations in Congo against Judah. And God gave them instruction. You don't have to fight in this battle. All you need to do is what? Sing and praise God. Number two. One of the ways to provoke the goodness of God is by dancing in praise and worship. David was dancing with all his might, misbehaving and dancing. Malka, his wife, looked through the window and said, what a mess. And so David said to Malka, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father. I will even be more undignified. God has 
a replacement for everybody. If God wants to use you to do something and you're not going to make yourself available, he will raise somebody and that person may not be as qualified as you are. God is looking for fat people, faithful, available, and teaching. How can you provoke the goodness of God? Number three, by clapping your hands. Number four, shouting in praise to God. Are you grateful to God? I want you to stand up now and shout, 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 shout. And lastly, I'm in agreement with my brother. Sacrifice and giving. Omo, huh. my expectations were surpassed. Pastor Barnabas preached about provoking God's goodness. And trust me, one of the ways I'm actually going to provoke God's goodness, God, God will agree for me, oh, because I am definitely, definitely shouting my way out. I came looking for jollof rice and I actually got fried rice and chicken, toppled with salad. Today's service, Pastor Barnabas wowed me. He was talking about fat. Yes, I look fat. Now I am fat. No man will diminish you this year. No circumstance will reduce you this year. You will increase, you won't diminish. You will appreciate, you won't come down. Are you ready to misbehave? Praise the Lord! I went to God and asked him some interesting questions. I said, you know, this thing is so difficult. And they keep telling me that you will get the glory out of it. I, I then I asked God, why is it my pain that gives you glory? The God of heaven who has done these things for these parishioners will also do yours for you. If only you can align. Tick tock, it's time to reset. My name is Samson Oklobia and this is Refuge News. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Help me turn to your neighbor and tell them, welcome to day three of Reset Conference. In fact, can you just stand to your feet, everyone? Just go and welcome somebody, greet them, and tell them, welcome, good to see you in our day three of Reset Conference in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just go and welcome somebody, greet them, ask them how their day was. If they had a wonderful day, give them a warm hug, a warm hug if you can. We'd like to welcome all our online family. Welcome to day three. It's getting better and better. Prophecies are being fulfilled. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man that they are ordered by the Lord. The path of a righteous shines brighter and brighter and brighter. Even unto the perfect thing. Somebody, your path will continue to shine brighter and brighter. And it's going to keep getting better and better and better for you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not getting any amen this year evening. Come on now. If you know you're excited about what God is about to do in your life, clap those hands together and lift up a shout of praise, a shout of glory. Come on, come on, come on. Go on somebody, somebody just clap those hands together. Hallelujah. One of the things that we learned yesterday, one of the ways that we can provoke the goodness of God is by what? Is by clapping. Another way is by words. Is by shouting. Another way is by dancing. Come on. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting ready to provoke God's goodness in your life? When it looks as though your life is down, it looks as though the world is turning against you. What do you do just to provoke God's goodness? Begin to clap that hand and tell, tell, just tell the devil you missed it. There's nothing you can do. Is somebody getting what I'm saying this, this, this Tuesday evening? And then when it gets, when it looks as though it's even getting from bad to worse, as you're clapping those hands, what do you do? You add some shouts. Yes. You add some shouts, hallelujah. And then when you're done clapping, what do you do? You add some words, some dancing to your shouts. Come on now, hallelujah. And then the last thing that we saw is what? 
a sacrifice. The first is worth singing and praising God. The second is clapping. The third is shouting. The third, the fourth is word is dancing. And then the last is worth giving by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together together again. You may please be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. We'd like to welcome all of us again to our day three of Reset Conference. Um, I believe that for some of us, if it's your first time attending Reset Conference today, can we just see by a raise of hand? Can we see by a raise of hand? God bless all of you. Can you stand? Let's put our hands together for all of our first time visitors attending Reset Conference. Please stand to your feet. If you're sitting close to them, shake their hands and make them feel very warmly welcome and tell them, welcome to our day three of Reset Conference. Good to see all of you. In Jesus' gracious mighty name, you may please be seated. Hallelujah. Some brief announcement. There's still free bus transportation immediately after the service. Um, if you're living around Lube, Sukkah, Kujay, Airport Road, Beggar, Area 1, Area 3, Junction, Lukagoma, Access, there are free transportation to these areas. Hallelujah. Please be reminded the conference continues um, tomorrow evening and we're just going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Um, I was so blessed, not just only by the word, even by the prayer sessions that we had yesterday. And I'm looking forward to more prayers even this evening. Tomorrow we're still going to be praying and we're still pushing as well. So please join us if you're not already, if you're not already pushing and then remind to invite your friends. Remember to invite your friends, remind your friends about the conference and God will bless you as you do in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Women's Woman Annual National um, 21 Days Prayer and Fasting continues tomorrow. Um, there's virtual prayer with Pastor Ephraim every day of the week from 6.30 a.m. to about 7.30 a.m. Um, um, all our women are encouraged to be part of the prayers um, during this time slot and God will bless you as you do in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That brother said that I'm leaving service. I'm fat, but I'm even leaving fat. Hallelujah. And fat means what? Faithful what? And then aim, available and teachable. Help me turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you fat? Tell them I'm very fat. <laughs> I am what? I am faithful, I'm available, and I'm teachable. One more time, look at somebody behind you and tell them, you're looking very fat. Tell them you're looking faithful, you're looking available, and you're looking very teachable. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I don't know want to waste much of your time. I believe we had a wonderful time yesterday. And the glory of the Lord of the Bible says will always supersede the glory of the formal. And it keeps getting better because that's scripture. Um, every day it keeps getting stronger and stronger. I'm really expecting for what God is going to do in service to them. Um, our guest speaker is someone I have known for, I, I mean, since 1992. Our path crossed um, where we were. And um, we <laughs> We used to pray together during that period. Um, and he was, I mean, like me, he just loved to pray. Um, teaching, preaching wasn't this. I mean, if you called him to pray, he, I mean, that was just what we loved to do, praying. And um, together, um, we, we worked together, we struggled together, lived together, suffered together, uh, went through hard knocks together in the ministry. <laughs> God teaching us stuff. Um, we were young, zealous for God, pursuing God, just chasing after Him, you know, and everything. Um, he left where we were before me, and then when He left, I didn't have anybody, so I left and I followed Him. The only difference was that I left and I went into a house on the rock. He left and then He followed me and entered into a house on the rock, and together we were serving in house on the rock together. Hallelujah. And um, he's a strong man. We call him the Lion of Joss. And um, when you hear him roar and groan in the spirit, you know that he's a man of the spirit. But for those who may not know him, I will put a brief bio together just to introduce um, him to you. Um, after that, um, TC would come to minister to us to create the path for the word. The reason we like to do this against the other way is so that he can ride on the strength of worship and then bring the word of God to us. Is that okay? So I'm going to ask the media to roll the buyer and then they can start. Reverend Yusuf Akila is the resident pastor of House on the Rock 
River of Life Jones and Regional Director of All House on the Rock Churches in Northeastern Nigeria. He is the pioneer of the Cutting Edge Network, an organization committed to inspiring church leaders into peak performances in any field of human endeavor. He is the host of the Just Economic Empowerment Summit, a conference that seeks to impact the society with relevant knowledge towards economic viability and in responding to the needs of this generation. He is also the host the Encounter, a musical concert that attracts thousands to the city of Jaws every year. Pastor Akila believes in success predicated on the operating principles of God's word to deliver unquestionable results. His perspective and mode of communication is holistic, all-embracing, energetic, and decisive. House on the Rock, the Refuge, with Jesus' joy. Let us celebrate Reverend Yusuf Akila. Hallelujah. So when Tehillah is done ministering, um, we're just going to stand to our feet and honor God who is the giver of the gift. Remember the power of your clap, the power of your shouting, the power of your dancing. Hallelujah. So without further ado, to the best choir, I'm biased because this is my, they are my tribe. To the best choir who always knows how to vibe what's into the spirit. Let's welcome Tissy as a minister to us in songs. Oh, I'm gonna make it. 
Just raise your hands to Jesus. Thank Him for this moment that resets you here. He has never lost a battle. And just grab somebody to your right and to your left. And just squeeze a prayer that God grant an answer for my brother. You have no idea how they got in here. Some came in an ambulance, some came in a stretcher. The battle of their life will not be lost. Whatever they are going through, they will experience victory. They we're moving from victory unto victory. Come on, say a prayer over that brother, over that sister. Answers will come tonight. Solutions will come tonight. Direction is coming tonight. And ask that every glass ceiling over their life be shattered. Limitations will give way. That their life will experience increase on all sides. 
This is the year, not another year. They can't afford another year in the same circle. Come on, pray for that person. They will not afford, an, you can't afford another year at the same level. You've come too far to go back the way you came. You've come, you've gone through a lot in life. You've, you've been through a lot in life. You ain't gonna come the same way again. There is victory in Jesus. 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 Pray for that brother, pray for that sister. You're going to obtain your inheritance. You will enter, you will retain, receive that which God has in store for you. Every possession you shall obtain it. You shall obtain it, you shall obtain it. There's victory in Jesus. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Our Father, we honor you this day. Together we shall rise above the clouds. Rise above every circumstance. All because of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now clap those hands together again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Before you are seated, it's a great joy to be at the refuge where there's a team of incredible fat people. <laughs> And there is a great joy to be here alongside my brothers in the faith. And there, my first gratitude and appreciation goes to our senior pastor, the Metropolitan of all House on the Rock. Come on, let's celebrate Pastor Paul for the visionary leadership over the family of House on the Rock. Amen. And there, I was praying on my seat that um, Pastor Uche will not go into some areas. <laughs> Coming a long way, I think it's one of my longest relationships, 1992. And um, like I've always maintained, I thank you for adding to my life and significant relationships in my life. You played a key role there and I do not take it for granted. And um, he introduced me to Pastor Paul. So it's, I can't forget that, thank you of anything that's of value you always get it to me and i'm quite honored um, to be called your friend and uh, to the girlfriend of the house pastor chichi thank you thank you and they celebrate my brother in the gospel pastor barnabas arasos of house in the rock weren't you blessed on last night amen thank you man of god thank you man of god um, I don't want to go into much about what's between me and him so that we can get into the word today. But we've come quite a long distance from House on the Rock, Makori, Pastor Paul Igomu. Thank you for being here. Where are you seated? Somewhere here. Amen. And from House on the Rock, Kano, Pastor Danjuma Sanke. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Amen. Amen. Uh, as was said, uh, I lead uh, the uh, pastoral uh, ministerial network, the Cutting Edge Network. And that uh, we're quite spreading within the middle belt, spreading into other nations. And just a mentoring group. And I'm honored to come along with me today all the way from Joss, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. <laughs> Irene. And a great man of God, Mr. Pastor Guya as well. Thank you for coming all the way from the city of Joss. And Apostle Austin Oko, thank you for coming. Apostle Charles. Thank you for coming, Pastor Eugene, all the way from Lafayette. Thank you for being part of this meeting. Now you clap for yourself now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. While we remain standing, let's get into the Word of God. We'll read a few scriptures and see how far God will navigate us, ultimately get us to a place where we could pray together and trust God for uh, a supernatural shift in all things and in all areas in Jesus' name. And Amen. Genesis chapter, 30, chapter 27, I will begin the reading from verse 30. Genesis 27, from verse 30 to verse 40. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, 
and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came in from his hunting and he also had made savory meat and brought it to his father and said to his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said I am thy son thy firstborn Esau and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him yea and he shall be blessed and when Esau heard the words of his father he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father bless me even me also O my father and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing and he said is he not rightly named Jacob for he had supplanted me these two times and took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou no reserve a blessing for me and Isaac answered and said unto Esau behold I have made him thy Lord and all his brethren have I given to him for servants and with corn and wine have I sustained him and when and what shall I do now unto thee my son and he so said unto his father has thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also my father and I and he so lifted up his voice and wept and Isaac his father answered and said unto him behold thy dwelling shall be with the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above verse 40 and by thy sword thou shall live and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. I'll be speaking in your hearing in the next few minutes on the subject the power of growth. One of the significant things of growth is, is the challenge that comes with growth. And when we talk about growth, it is multifaceted, it is multidirectional. And when you grow, you, you don't grow just one area, everything about your life. When you grow in life, you grow, your fingers grow, your hands grow, everything around you grows to bring balance to it. But one of the challenges to growth is the obstacles you have to surmount just to arrive at the place you ought to be. And we trust God tonight to grant grace, even in this year of increase to experience growth in all areas in Jesus name shall we pray father thank you for the entrance of your word that give you light you give it understanding to the simple we ask that your sovereign spirit will cascade and move from seat to seat from row to row effect and affect lives to the intent that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven for your mercy servant grammy grace will speak as an oracle for the edification the establishment of your people on the present truth we found to give you the glory because we know you will do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask you for emerging for in jesus name we pray and everybody said a big amen. You may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. One of the things that determines life's fruitfulness is the understanding of purpose. Someone said that purpose, in simple terms, means the original intent of anything. And the scripture declares to us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that to everything we see under the sun, there's a time and a season for it. And most time, the reason why we don't understand the purpose of things many times is because the timing hasn't come for the purpose. And just because the timing hasn't arrived, has not canceled the purpose and intent of God, why he allowed that thing to be the way it is. Understand with me, ladies and gentlemen, that when God made the heavens and the earth, everything that you see on the earth has a purpose of being here. There's nothing that is on the earth that is here by chance or by happenstance. And the Bible speaks to us in the book of Revelation and says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things 
things for thy pleasure they are and are created so whatever you see that you see on the earth whether it's animate or inanimate there is a purpose behind it so I want you to know that regardless of where you find yourself where you are right now you are here on the planet on purpose somebody say I'm here on purpose say it again tell your neighbor you are here on purpose yes you might not fully grasp it but this is the very key that unlocks your inert potential that God has endowed your life with there's no human being no human species that doesn't have a purpose why they're on the earth that's why nobody has your thumbprint because nobody also can do what you can do God does not waste resources and the moment God's assignment for your life is done you exit the planet so when you wake up every morning you find yourself living it clearly tells you have unfinished business in the plan and the will of God for your life but beyond the fact that you have uh, a purpose in God, you, there is a, a promise over your life. So hear me tell somebody, there's a promise over my life. Yes, uh, and your life cannot be more significant, cannot attain uh, to a place in life beyond the parameters of the promise of God for your life. And every time God wants to do something amazing in a person's life, uh, he communicates that, that divine purpose with a promise. And that's why the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that might be well with you. And there's a promise that you may live longer on the earth. So I agree and agree with you that there is a purpose of over your life but beyond the fact that there's a purpose of your life there is a promise over your life and as long as that promise subsists there's nothing the enemy can do and take you out on the planet until the purpose and the promise comes to pass but then to operate your promise and your and your purpose uh, is the dimension called uh, there is a prophecy over your life the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ uh, he said Lord, hello I come in the volume of the books as it is written concerning my life so ladies and gentlemen you have a promise you have a purpose and you have a prophecy your life is not operating operating haphazardly actually is living out a script that the prophecy of of God over your life. Now, when I mean a prophecy of God, is the is what the Bible speaks in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end and hope. And until these three are fully realized, your days on earth are not over yet. So I want you to rejoice that your purpose is in place, your promise is in place, and your prophecy is in place we find the mandate of this truth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 where God says and then God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living creature that move it upon the earth when God made there the heavens and the earth and everything that we find on it the human species was the last in the cadre of creation and God did it on purpose God did it on purpose. He didn't make man on the first day, not the second day, not the third day, not the fourth day. But he did, he did create man on the fifth day and now put him on the zenith of God's creation. There is a purpose why God did that. So that man will have dominion, rather he dominates everything. And the reason for this is why you find the human species will fight anything that is restrictive. Because when God made us, he made us in the image and likeness of God. And we are not born, we are not created bound, we are created free. So that we can exercise dominion over everything God made. And that is why when, when a human being exists on the earth, it's innate in us that for anything that attempts to restrict us, we have a way we repel and reject it because we are not designed to be bound. And so when we come to the subject of growth, uh, and when we talk about growth, it could mean anything. And there are different optics to growth. Depending on how you see growth, and the parameters that determine what you measure as growth. 
What is growth? It's progress. John wrote in the epistle and said, I wish above all things uh, that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. In that simple scripture we find uh, he's talking about your prosperity on the outside, your prosperity on the inside. And so when we consider the subject of growth, you have to look at it from all aspects of human life, from all angles of human life. Uh, and is the plan and the will of God for your life that no area of your life should be stagnant that no area of your life should be at the same space and, and you know something about growth timing is also key to it because after a while there should be some evidence to show that you have made progress in some area of your life you know when, when people grow when we grow up we have kids and uh, my, my son is much taller than I am six five you know you, you get to an age where you stop growing physically but you're growing mentally. But the concern of God for us in this year of increase, that this increase should not stop. Psalm 92 tells us that you will bear fruit even in old age. Somebody say amen. amen. That you will bear fruit. You shall be fat and flourishing even in old age. So as long as you are alive, your life is bound to make progress. That is the one proof you are living and not dead. Because once you stop growing, you start dying. Now, somebody described success or prosperity as not having money, but having resources whenever you need them. To do what you have to do, when you have to do it. But understand as well that growth is a process. It's not a one-off event. The Bible speaks to us in Mark's Gospel chapter 4 and verse 28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full cone in the ear. First the blade, there is a stage and there is a phase. So don't get upset because you might be in a stage and a phase that might not be exactly that of somebody else. And the Bible said they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. So there is a process to growth. Growth cannot be sudden, no sir. Growth is a process. But the good news is, it is not the will of God for your life that you stop growing. Intellectually, spiritually, maritally, every area of your life ought to show progress. And when only one area of your life is growing and the others are not growing, something is out of place. And it's the duty of the believer to demand that every aspect of their life produces and is making progress. We find in our text two brothers, in fact, one is elder, one is younger. But the truth is, they are twins actually. They came in the same day, their birthday is the same day. Because sometimes when you hear the story of Esau and, and Jacob, it looks like he was many years ahead. No sir, they were, they were twins. In fact, they came up in a space of I don't know how long it took, but it was the same day they were born. But there was something that distinguished one from the other. Because when the mother was pregnant with these two boys, and, and she didn't understand what was going on, and she goes to God in prayer and says, what's going on? And God says to her, two nations are in your womb. And God clearly said by prophetic declaration that the elder will serve the younger. And I'm here to tell somebody, I don't care how it sits with you, every prophetic word for your life will come to pass. I said every prophetic word for your life will come to pass. And what I know about the prophetic word of God, it doesn't always sit right with everybody. But the devil is a liar. Whatever God says you are going to be is exactly what you're going to be. Shout yes if you believe it. Uh, yes, because uh, the first will be the the first will be the last, and the last will be the first. I have never found a prophetic word of God uh, that fits natural sequence. 
Because if we have to follow a natural sequence, you might not arrive at your destiny when you should arrive somewhere in the process of time somewhere in the process of your life God has to juggle a few things up shift a few things up because if they have to allow things to happen the normal way because a prophecy is not natural and when a prophecy is about to come to pass it doesn't matter who likes you it doesn't matter who believes in you when God was set to bless the man called David like my brother preached yesterday he wasn't numbered there but the, the prophet said we are not gonna sit down until he comes and I see somebody <laughs> laws are going to be changed this year for your sake I didn't hear your amen policy has to be changed Standards have to be changed. Protocol has to be broken. Oh, I don't see the way you, whether you believe what I'm saying. Because if they allow people, you will never get there. So I declare over your life, let there be a shift. Let there be a breaking of laws. Let there be a breaking of systems. Because there is no way you will tell me that the younger will be head of the elder. There's just something about you that is absurd. There's just something. Have you ever read your prophecy all over again? Have you ever gone over the notes uh, that things God told you? How do you say it? How in the world can you say? See me, people. There comes a moment in your life that is defining. And this is the power of prophecy. It activates the entirety of who God is. Because in fulfilling that prophetic word, it will have to be a challenge on the integrity of God. Because but for God, how can you say you will be head and not tail? How can you say you will be above all in open it? Every prophecy of God on your life is ridiculous by natural standards. But can I tell you the good news? It's coming to pass. I said it's coming to pass. This is not for everybody. But do I have a witness of someone that know you have a prophecy from God? I tell you the word of God is coming to pass. I don't care where you are, it's coming to pass. I don't care what you're going through, it's coming to pass. I don't care what they say about you, it's coming to pass. The one that gave the prophecy has all it takes to bring it to pass. December 7th, I find myself at the U.S. State Department speaking for 150 Christian organizations around the world. My head went up. I was talking to President Biden's advisor about the state of Christians being persecuted around the world. When I entered the building, my head went up. And then my mind flashed back. Certain prophecies of God, I sense in my spirit. The, the book of remembrance is about to be opened for somebody in the year 2024. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. I said the book of remembrance who is that person here that the book of remembrance there are things God told you uh, several years ago that looked a complete lie but let God be true let every man be a liar Tell your neighbor, take a good look at me. 
because it's the last time you will see me this way it's the last time you will see me at this level it's the last time you will see me at this address it's the last time I will have to borrow from you take a good look I'm coming I'm coming I'm steaming up I'm waking up my prophecy is coming my prophecy is coming my promise is coming is coming tell your neighbor i am not waiting for your endorsement i am endorsed by heaven every prophecy of god has the power of god how do you think you are going to be head and tail in an economy like this some say prophecy and hear this, when we had a conference, Spirit Life conference last year, and I heard what Dr. Mensah Otabil alluded to about the time of the Daniel. And Daniel was praying to find how long they were going to be in captivity. And it was in the 17th year. And this is what he said, that Nigeria is approaching a 17th year. As we get closer to when we are 70, there is something in the agenda of God. And I see God is going to shift things between now and that 70th year. And some of you right now that you are on the floor, you are going to be at the top. Some of you right now that you are having to beg and borrow, you'll be at the top. There is a prophecy. There is a prophecy. And in the name of Jesus, I come in the volume of the book concerning your life I activate every prophetic word I activate every prophetic word over your life in the name of Jesus yeah. sit down well, what makes growth tough is because there are odds. There are odds. And when those odds come, their intention is to make you not rise. But what God does, He makes the odds become the catalyst, they become the catalyst and the pedestal. Had the princes of this world known, they would not have sold Joseph. But there was no way Joseph would become his prophecy in his father's house. That could only be outside the house. And to facilitate it, he had to use the hate of his brothers to get him to his destination. There are things that people are doing against you. You don't have to cry. God is using them as a pedestal to just propel you. You know what you mean to the State Department? The crisis in Jaws. What they said crisis has paid me more. I got a letter, I forwarded to the Lagos Church office. I'm being invited to Washington DC. This mountain. To speak at the International Religious Freedom Summit on the Just Crisis. All things. Hmm. I feel his presence. All things work together. Ha! Your friends, your enemies, your brothers, your siblings, your boss, your situation, your crisis, your dilemma, all things. My capo said, I don't know who I'm talking to here, but somebody said all things. No, 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 you are too weak, you don't believe it. How many of you believe in said all things? want the all things to hear you loud. Shout it all things. 
said it one more time. The devil made a mistake to have allowed you to come to church tonight because God is about to take all things and work it together for your Somebody shout yes. yes. Go out of your seat, slap somebody. Ten percent of high five. It's working for your good. 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 Your pain working for your good. Your crisis working for your good. Your situation is working. It's working. It's working. Clap your hands. It's working. Shout. It's working. It's working. Hey! I want you to look at the worst event in your life and see it as a potential stepping stone for your promotion. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming! You are increasing on all sides. Shout a big amen. Refuge, I can't hear you. I say increase is coming. Increase is coming. Increase is coming. Financial increase. Spiritual increase. Natural spirit. Physical increase. Intellectual increase. Shout yeah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. If you know this is your year, look for tempers and tell them this year is my year. This year is my year. It's coming. Holy. I want those who haven't been to nothing to keep quiet. But those of us who have been going through stuff. As you shout, the walls are falling. As you shout, the limits are breaking. They are breaking. They are breaking. They are breaking. Look at your neighbor's face and give your loudest scream tonight. You will watch me rise. You will watch me go forward. My business is blessed. My marriage is blessed. My career is blessed. My ministry is blessed. The refuge is blessed. The refuge is blessed. The refuge is blessed. I call for in the name of Jesus from the north, from the south, from the west, from the east. I call for your blessing. I said, I call for your blessing. I call for your blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Clap like you have it. I said, clap like you have it already. Can I tell you something? Lift your hands. A blessing that doesn't make sense is coming your way. I said a blessing that doesn't make sense. Pastor Uche, there are three ladies in the choir. They are dedicated. I just saw it right now. They are getting married this year. This year. How do you know? As I speak right now, they don't have a relationship. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, a blessing that doesn't make sense is yours. Is yours. Is yours. Is yours. Is yours. Is yours. 
I don't know who that is for, but you have been waiting for a blessing that makes sense. But there's a blessing uh, that is coming your way. You will be the reference point. I said you will be the reference point. You will be the reference point. If you sense it, shout hey! hey. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Pastor Uche, I'm having a miracle service in Josh. And a woman has been bent over like this for years. The husband brings her to the service. And then we prayed. She flipped back. She so flipped back that the husband saw her and could not believe it, is, it was his wife. I sense in this atmosphere, some of you are too broke, too poor, but by the end of this year, God will flip your life back, that your friends cannot recognize you, your neighbors will not recognize you, your classmates will not recognize you. Oh! Somebody say, I have my evidence. Oh, I can't hear you say, I have my evidence. In your business, in my career, in my ministry, in my relationship, in my ministry, in my family, I have my evidence. For some persons, this year is just a natural year, but there are some of us, it's a prophetic year. I believe, Pastor Uche, that declaration that this year is a year of increase, you will see increase. Oh, you will see increase, supernatural increase in the same city of Abuja. You think you are the only church by the city gate by accident? You are gatekeepers. You know what gatekeepers do? They determine what goes in and what goes out. Lift your hands. I speak over your life that you step into your prophetic office as gatekeepers over the federal capital territory. I say, I declare upon you, uh, you step into your office uh, as gatekeepers. Uh, you will determine what goes in. Uh, you will determine what goes out. Uh, you will be numbered among the great. Uh, you will be numbered among the mighty. Uh, you will sit on high tables. Uh, you will be highly favored uh, because you are gatekeepers. Hear what he says. My time is out. <laughs> Take me back to my text. Stand everybody. That Genesis 27 verse 40. He says, and he came, verse 40. Give me verse 40. And when he saw, number verse 40. And by the sword thou shalt live, and shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass where you shall have dominion. When tells is a matter of time. <laughs> Can I tell you, somebody put your watch out and say, it's my time. <laughs> you don't have to say it, but if you know that it's your time, it's your time, it's your time, it's your time to be favored, it's your time to be promoted, it's your time to go to the next level, it's your time for increase, your time for increase, your time for increase, increase, increase. You know why I didn't see increase before? It wasn't time. When it was not your time, it was other people's time. But someone said, but now is my time. <laughs> hey, I don't like the way he says, hey, but now is my time. Tell your neighbor, my neighbor, excuse me. Say, excuse me. You had your time and I rejoice with you. Now is my time. Hey! It's your time. 
house on the road the refuge is your time is your time the blessing is coming resources are coming numbers are coming favors are coming somebody said it is my time Let me have that verse 40 from the New King James Version. New King James. New King James. Now it happened. No. By your sword, you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass when you become restless. How many people have been feeling restless? Restless at your present level, uh, restless at your finances. Uh, you are the one next. I say you are the one next. Don't say the amen like I force you. Uh, if you have been feeling restless, shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. And is you get to a level in life that some things that people clap, you don't clap. You know why? that you are much bigger than that and the Bible says when you become restless as long as you are okay you are okay but Abraham told the servants you stay with the asses we are going yonder so tell your neighbor say you can remain where you are but I'm going forward going forward you can cheer at me I'm going forward you can say what you like I'm going forward he says when you become restless then that you shall break the yoke of servitude one of the things I came to do tonight is break that yoke from off your neck I come in an anointing that breaks yokes, an anointing uh, that breaks limitations, an anointing uh, every barrier on your life. I command you broken now. I said, I command you broken now. Every barrier on your finances, uh, I command you broken now. Every every barrier to your career be broken now. I can hear your amen. Be broken now! Be broken now! Let me have the same verse from another translation. And that is the message translation. Verse 40. Verse 40. You will live by your sword, hand to mouth. Somebody's hand to mouth is over tonight. You know what is hand to mouth? When your expenditure cancels your income, I decree upon your life abundance. Oh, you are not ready. Let me go to this side. I said, I decree abundance. I decree abundance. I command abundance. I say abundance. To live from hand to mouth clearly tells you don't save. And, and when you look at the way things are going, that's why you need the hand of the Lord. Put your hand on your head. Father, I pray for every person here. Let your hand come upon your people. Come upon their enterprise. Come upon the work of their hands. Come upon their businesses. Come upon their careers. In the name of Jesus. Say with me. Look at the verse. But when you can't take it anymore. Hey! I don't know about you, but there are some of us I need to say to the devil, I can't take it anymore. You need to tell that barrier, I can't take it anymore. You need to tell that situation, I am not taking it anymore. I am not taking it anymore. When? When are you not going to take it anymore? I can't hear you. When? 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 In the name of Jesus, I declare your servitude is over. 
I said, I declare your servitude is over. Where you have been serving for these years, uh, she receive a release now. I decree and I declare all your services are paid. You are rewarded. I say you are rewarded. You are rewarded. You are rewarded. He says, when I can't take it anymore. Lift your hands, I'm closing. Thank you, Father, in this place. In Isaiah, it says, your warfare is accomplished. And I speak over this house as individuals, as a family, and as a congregation. I come in the name of the Lord, and I speak every cloud over the refuge be lifted now in the name of Jesus. Every burden that you have carried for this number of years is broken off your shoulders. I said it's broken off your shoulders. It's broken off your shoulders. By reason of the anointing, I destroy every yoke. I destroy the yoke of limitations. I destroy the yoke of limitations. Confinement. I command your chains to break. I command your chains to break. Experience the power of growth. Yeah. Apostle Rocco talked about grace. I command grace. The grace for increase. The grace to grow on every area. I said grow in every area. Grow in every area. Come on, let's put those hands together and just give the Lord some praise. All I can say is wow. What we have on the end, we're still going to pray. We're still going to pray. At the end of the seven days, your life cannot remain the same. I do not know about you, but my life is changing. It has already started. Things are shifting in the spirit. The waters are perhaps it's not just being stared. The water continues to be stared in the spirit. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the implications of all of the things that we're hearing. The prayers that have been made over our lives. Prayers are powerful. That's why in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said men ought always to pray. And not to faint. So when a servant of God begins to pray over you. A spiritual father begins to make declarations over you. Those words that he's making are powerful. If you watch the petrols of our faith, every time they wanted to release to the next generation, it was true word of blessing. And when they wanted to curse a generation, it is true words that they would pronounce. Hallelujah. And the scripture tells us that when we believe the Lord, he said we shall be established. That when we believe his prophets, he said what? That we shall what? We shall prosper. So there's no way this year that as those words of prophecies have been proclaimed over your life, that where things could have been difficult for you in 2024, it will become easy in the mighty name of Jesus. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So I want you to grab as much as you can grab. When Pastor Yusuf was praying for me and was saying that this year I would experience increase, I received everything on the inside of me. I would experience it. I would work in it. It would not just be words in my life. It would be a reality in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, when I experience increase, the refuge would experience increase as well. Because the oil does not stay on the head. It flows down. So whatever is on the head, the body will feel it as well. Somebody getting what I'm saying? So we're not done praying for those of us who are seated. Don't be seated. If you're tired, walk around. Amen. Let's all stand. I'm going to call on Pastor Yusuf and Pastor Panabas. Pastor Yusuf has made a lot of declarations. We can allow him to rest if he wants to, if he so chooses. But I'll call on Pastor Panabas as well. 
to come on stage. So Pastor Barnabas is going to pray. Every one of us here, we're all in one relationship with the other. And relationships are very critical in 2024. The community and the relationship you surround yourself with in 2024 can either make you or can break you. Those relationships can either make you a better person or they can destroy you. Somebody said that when God wants to bless you, he, bless you, he blesses you with a good relationship. And when the devil wants to attack you and curse you, he would use relationship to attack you and to curse you as well. You don't need those bad relationships in 2024. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Likewise, in our marriages as well, we want to pray that every marriage and the refuge, those who are married, no matter the onslaught and the attack of the enemy against those marriages, they will not work in 2024. For our single brothers and sisters like Pastor Yusuf prophesied over three sisters in Tequila Company, they did not receive it, they were just, you know, I want you those singles amongst us, whether you are male, whether you are female. If somebody Somebody gets what I'm saying. By this time next year, you will be in reset conference with your husband and with your wife. In the mighty name of Jesus, not by power, not by mind, but by His Spirit, see the Lord of hosts. Is somebody getting me? So Pastor Yusuf, sorry, Pastor Panabas is praying over all of these things. And you know what prayer does is as he begins, begins to pray, divine enablement is released over your life. So what you cannot naturally do for yourself, the anointing begins to help you do it. That's why I said the anointing shall break yokes in your life. If somebody would hear what I'm saying, and one of the ways that God conveys the anointing is through his word. So when his word is being spoken, when his word is being released, anointing is released and that anointing enables us. So that such, the, such the, the, the things that you normally cannot do for yourself, you begin to do. You remember how the grace and the anointing came upon, upon Elijah and then he had run the chariot of Ahab. No human being by his natural strength could have run a horse. In fact, the chariot of four horses. But because of that grace and anointing that came upon him, he had ran chariots of Ahab as fast as they were Abraham I mean Elijah overtook them and was and got to the destination even before them somebody's speed is coming your way in 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus so I'm going to call on Pastor Panabas he will just come and quickly make those declarations and then Pastor Yusuf would come make declarations and then we'll round up the service is somebody getting ready for blessing this evening Pastor Panabas hallelujah now clap your hands oh ye people Clap your hands, stamp your feet. Clap your hands, stamp your feet. Clap your hands, stamp your feet. Go up with a shout! You need to get a prayer partner. Matthew 18, 19. Look at somebody say, please agree with me. If your, your wife is by your side, hold her tight. Matthew 18, 19. Watch this. Matthew 18. When two of you, again I said unto you, if two of you, Agree on earth concerning anything. Say with me, anything that they shall ask, it will be done for them by my Father that is in heaven. Amplified classic, please. I want you to see something. Anything we ask the Father, it will be done by our Father who is in heaven. But look at look at look at the amplified classic. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever. See that word? Anything and everything everything and anything that they may ask two things watch now it will come to pass say with me one it will come to pass say with me one and then number two it will be done by my father in heaven i love the message he said the father will go to work so we're going to we're going to put the father to work message give me the message version the father will react message please when two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer my father goes into action okay god is going to go into action right now i read a book by kenny higgin 30 years ago called the name of jesus and kenny higgin said for 50 years there's nothing him and his wife have agreed on that never came to pass that tells you the power of agreement are you hearing me all barriers must go I say all barriers must go. Hold somebody. Hold them. What? Just one person. One, two people. Go. You make sure you're holding somebody. Make sure. Say with me. Agree with me. Yes. Tell the person. Agree with me. 
Now watch this. When God wants to bless you, he will send you a man. When the devil wants to mess you, he will send you one wrong person. When God wants to uplift a family, he will send them a man. When the devil wants to mess up a family, he sends one wrong person. When God wants to bless a nation, he sends them one man. When God wants to curse a nation and mess up a nation, he sends them one wrong person. Hallelujah. Say, God forbid. Say, in 2024, God forbid. In 2024, God forbid. Look at your neighbor and say, please agree with me now. Say, I'm searching to anything and everything in 2024. Now, release your prayer language. Garado Shata. Ikabrato City. Lebre Deberia Gabada City. Ikamagadaya. Ikabrado Shepe Hekre Debe. Libro Godo Sipe Ante Pele. Rigabariga Bada City. Libre Diga hakraga da siri levan de pele kabaradi kabadaya i kabarodo bo siri i kamagadi be eko baria libre dibre ekle di brasia levan de pele kabaradi agabaya i kamande pele digri di kabada i koporodo go bodo siri levan de pele di kabadaya i kamande pele dibre ekle debe libro tu se pele ande kabara we agree as concern as touching anything and every Everything concerning your destiny, your relationship, your finances, your career, your family life, your posterity, your enterprise. Only God's predetermined counsel, His will and His purpose will be done in your life. Here, 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 here. Can I hear praying church? You have 45 seconds. I command the pele. I crodobo dia. Libe eko de sede. Libra ande pele gabadaya. I crodobo du si peheke. Libra diga baladiga badaya. I prodogobo dog city. Libre ekre de be. You have 25 seconds. Adebo hoshia. Here. Here. You have 15 seconds. If two of us shall agree as touching to anything, everything, we agree concerning family life, we agree concerning your enterprise, we agree concerning your children, we agree concerning the singles. city. May God's predetermined counsel, what God has in his mind concerning your life and your purpose be done, that your prophecy will come to pass. Igabarate city, you have five more minutes, five more seconds. Igahade Beshia, Libre Enderia, Ragaduce Pelegaria, Lida Radiga Barogo Dogobo city, in Pelegabada, Igaha Soto, Limande Pele di Grehetia Capaya. In Jesus' victorious, matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Now look at me. We're breaking barriers. Barriers are curse. They are limitation. Sometimes in your life there's a ceiling. Something that tells you, a force that tells you you can't go beyond this level. Now please hear me. One woman terrorized a prophet until he had depression. Jezebel, Jezebel terrorized Elijah, the man who called fire, until he entered depression. But you know what? When Jehu came, he pushed her from the wall. Pushed her. She fell. And her, guess what? She broke all her part and dogs uh, ate her flesh and licked her blood. You can understand and put your right leg forward and look your hand like, push your hand this way. Every limit, say with me, every limitation. I didn't hear you say every limitation. Every barrier in the name that is above every other name. In the name that is above every other name. I break in the name of Jesus. Every barrier, every limitation, every ceiling. I break in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Stay in that position. John 14, 14. I want you to see something. So that you could be a little bit aggressive. John 14, 14. This is what Jesus said. Give me New King James. New King James. New King James. New King James, please. If you ask anything 
in my name I will do it if you ask anything in my name in the authority of my name I will do it are you ready now are you ready now every spirit of Jezebel every ceiling over your finances every barrier over your ministry are you getting ready are you getting ready say every barrier every ceiling every limitation you got to go now you got to go now you got to go now are you ready push in the name of Jesus push in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Hold on now, hold on. Say with me, every barrier over my life, my destiny, my future, my finances, my posterity in 2024, you got to go now. You got to go now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now push, now push in the name of Jesus. Now push in the name of Jesus. Now push in the name of Jesus. Now push in the name of Jesus now push in the name of Jesus now hold on I read physics now please hear me some barriers are like glass you understand some barriers are like glass you don't see them but they're there now in physics that's what we call echo when you echo the echoes it goes sometimes it bounces back there's a level of shout when you shout. It breaks barrier. There's a kind of force that comes out of your mouth. Everything that looks like a barrier breaks, shifts, disappears. Are you ready with me? Are you ready with me? Say with me, this year is different. Say this year is different. Say with me, this year is different. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Praise the Lord! last prayer point last prayer point until you get aggressive adjustment in the realm of the spirit doesn't come this is the last one there are wicked people believe me there are wicked people I said do you mean we know we are of God but the entire world lied in wickedness we can tell for ourselves sorry Pastor Barnabas I hate to do this to you sorry you know, when we were praying, what I heard in my spirit that there's an, a graceful first that has been released over the house. Yeah. What that means is that you will be the first in your family to shatter barriers and ceilings. Yeah. If you want to shout, shout. Now clap your hands, all you people. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout with the voice, with the voice, with the voice of triumph. Let me get out of your face. We can tell for ourselves, we know we are of God. But the entire world lied in wickedness. Galatians 6, 17. From now, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of Jesus Christ. You hear me? From now. You hear me? Let me say something to you, Pastor Oche. I didn't tell you yesterday. Please watch this. I told you that this week you have to hear and pay attention. We are standing in, in a threshold of time, but it's called a gate in time. Let me say this. Whatever thing we do here will count, will matter throughout the year. Let me tell you one thing. When it was 31st night into first, it was a gate in time. 
into the whole year. January is this last Sunday was the first Sunday. We are still in that process. It's also a gate in time. January is also a gate in time. Please maximize this one week. Don't miss any meeting. From now. Say with me from now. I want you to shout it from now. Say with me from now. Say with me from now. Let no man. Let no woman. Group of persons. Witches or wizard. Woolock. Trouble me. For I bear on my body. The mark of Jesus Christ. Are you there with me? Let's go again for the last time. From now. Henceforth. Let no man. Let no woman. Group of persons. Principalities. Witches or woolock. Trouble me. For I bear in my body. The mark of Jesus Christ. Now turn it into prayer for 60 seconds. Ga 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 ga. Lay Kota City. 60 seconds. Kagadaga. Kadagadaga ga 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 ga. In Pelegadaya. No body. No group of persons. People. Wulog. Witch. There is no sorcery against Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. No man will trouble you. No man born of any woman will trouble you, intimidate you, frustrate you, for you bear in your body. The mark of Jesus Christ. Can I hear a praying church? You have 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Push it out. Push it out. Here. 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 In Jesus' name, set your hands to receive. If you can see the palm of your hand, it's receiving mood. And if you can't see it, it's worship. Father, we come in the name that is above every other name. 2,000 years ago at a place called Golgotha, the place of this call, our elder brother hung on the cross, having wiped out the handwritings of ordinances that were against us and contrary to us. He took it out of the way and nailed it and said, it is finished. It is finished to your pain. It is finished to your limitations it is finished to barriers it is finished to intimidation go and succeed go and prosper go and be all that God has predestined you to become in the name of Jesus the last prayer session and we are done I'm going to ask Pastor Yusuf um, just to pray as he's led, but just to add that we, we, I want him to also pray for the mercies of God over our lives. Um, the mercies of God is very critical because there'll be times when you yourself can't help yourself because you can't pray. You're in this place where as though you're weak, but mercy would prevail in those instances. The Bible says there will be emancipation even for the lawful captive. What brings about the emancipation for those who have been lawfully captured by the enemy is the mercies of God. Is somebody hearing me? And there's none of us, myself inclusive, who does not need the mercies of God in our lives at different intervals of our lives. It's mercy that would come to a place where you are not there and they're planning against you and they want to undo you. It's the mercy of God that would raise somebody from such place and say, don't touch him, let him be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every one of us needs the mercies of God. Then he's also going to pray that at this sometime this year, no matter the battles we face, no matter the upheaval, no matter the, I mean, the tide we're as, and we're that, that we're trying to come against, that God would grant every one of us victory in 2024. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? That God will grant every one of us victory in those battles. And that even in those instances, things that you thought you would have lost, whether it's investment, that God will work everything together for your good. 
and that I didn't hear that amen that God will work everything together for your good so in instances where you know you maybe it might be in June it might be maybe somewhere in September no matter the time of the year it might even be in January it might even be that somebody is even there right now it seems as though you're confused and you're wondering but I've been coming for prayers I started the conference but it looks as though things are just starting on the very bad note for you all of those things will work together for your good in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ Pastor Yusuf Psalm 90 verse 14 lift your hands he says oh satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days in 2024 father I pray over every hand raised satisfy everyone early with mercy every family early with mercy every business represented satisfy them early with your mercy in the name of Jesus I speak over every home satisfy them early with your mercy in the name of Jesus I decree over your life there will be no delays in this year I say no delays in the name of Jesus I say no delays in the name of Jesus every blessing that is yours uh, I call it for now I call it for now I call it for now you have served your situation long enough uh, I hereby terminate uh, every contract over your life the contract of delays they are broken now they are broken now they Father, thank you. There's a woman to my left. You have a relative who is suffering from what I call memory loss. Thank you, Father. By the prophetic word of God, Ezekiel commanded and things began to come together. Now in the mighty name of Jesus, I use that person as a point of contact to everyone here. Everything scattered in your life, let it come together. Yeah. Every those payments that are scattered all over the country by a prophetic unction, I command it to come together. Yeah. I say I command it to come together. I command it to come together. I command the four winds of God to blow your blessing to you now. Let your blessing locate you. I said, let your blessing locate you. Let your favor locate you. Let your testimony locate you. Let your evidence locate you. In the name of Jesus. I decree over your life that this year you shall be settled. I said this year you shall be settled. This year you shall be settled in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray what you seek you would find. The doors you knock upon in 2024, they shall open. And what you ask in this year, you will not be denied. You will not be denied. I command the door of divine access. Be open now. I command the matrix of 2024. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. What a great night it has been. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause and just appreciate Him. Let's honor Him this evening. Hallelujah. Don't miss tomorrow. It's going to be great or even greater. It's keep, it keeps getting better in the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow we're going to spend a lot of time breaking every plans of the enemy over our lives in 2024. 
The scripture that the Lord put in my spirit is what Jesus Christ said to Peter. The devil has decided to see if he was with. Peter did not even know. I mean, the devil was planning. Jesus caught it in the spirit and told him, this is the plan of the enemy against you. But look at what happened. Jesus Christ said, I have prayed for you. But the devil tried and wanted to see Peter. But because of the prayer of Jesus, it intervened and Peter was restored. So there's power in prophetic utterances, prophetic declarations. So every plans of the enemy against your life, to truncate your life, to cut it short in 2024, whether it's your business, whether it's your family, your relationship, whatever those plans are, we're going to pray against them. They will not see the light of day in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Only the plan of God concerning you will be done in Jesus' name. So don't not miss tomorrow. Invite somebody to service as you come in Jesus' name. Let's put our offerings together very quickly. Let's put our offerings together. Don't forget there's free transportation for those who need transportation. You may please proceed it very briefly. As we put our offerings together, let's put those offerings together. Let's put those offerings together very quickly. Thank you so much, Pastor Yusuf, for being a blessing to us today and reminding us of the power of growth and the power of the prophecies and the promises over our lives and activating those prophecies and those promises over our lives in Jesus' name. Some of you are flying this week in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not as though the enemy won't try. He will try, but you will come out unscathed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As believers, we're not survivors, we're thrivers. Amen. We will not just survive stuff, we're thriving through stuff in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, when you're surviving, you're barely coming out of it, you might be weak, but when you're thriving, you're coming out stronger. You know, it's as though you never even went through it. It's like those three Hebrew boys that were thrown into um, the furnace of fire. When they came out, they did not even smell like smoke. Hallelujah, because God preserved them. They thrived through even the furnace of fire. And that will be our testimonies in Jesus' name. Let's lift up our offerings and say, Father, thank you for the opportunity to give my seed this evening. I declare over my life, said I declare over my life, I am blessed. My finances are blessed. Everything about my life is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare over my life, even as I give, I provoke increase, I invoke increase over every aspect of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. This is my year of increase and growth in the mighty name of Jesus. And so every yoke of the enemy around me is broken completely, especially around my finances. It is broken in the mighty name of Jesus around my fellowship and relationship with God. It is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone say, thank you, Father, because I know you have heard and answered us. Even in Jesus' gracious mighty name, we have prayed. And everyone says a very loud amen. Amen. Let's move our offerings very quickly to your left hand side and watch your offerings as they go. Watch your offerings as they go. Expect the unexpected. Somebody, the way you started this year is definite. It's a definite word for somebody. It's not how you're ending the year better in the mighty name of Jesus. You might not have a job right now, but at the end, before the year is over, you will be a director in the mighty name of Jesus. Scriptures cannot be broken. Heaven and earth, the Bible says, shall pass away, but not a jot or a tittle of his word will go unfulfilled in our lives. Those words of prophecies that have been spoken over our lives will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Again, do not forget to invite someone for service tomorrow. We'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow's typically um, a midweek service today. We're going to be hearing a strong word and then we're going to go into a session of prayer. One of the things we'll be praying about, I've already told you. So let's come expectant because when you're expectant, it creates an atmosphere for things to happen in your life. In fact, the expectation is a manure for which the seed of the word of God is sown and then it begins to grow and bear forth fruits in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put the hands together for this wonderful man of God one more time. Let's appreciate them and celebrate them for being a blessing this evening. Let's all rise to our feet. Let's rise as we close service. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord causes face to shine upon you. The Lord grant you peace on every side.
the Lord grant you increase in the mighty name of Jesus the Lord be gracious to you even the whole of this year and in this season in the mighty name of Jesus as you go testimonies await you at home the Lord watches over you whilst you sleep and when you wake up you're waking up strong as angels minister to you we release angels into your tomorrow to minister to you and to make way for you where there seems to be no way in Jesus gracious mighty name we have prayed and everyone shouts aloud amen God bless you see you tomorrow early and invite someone as you come in Jesus name have a very good evening